Today I will speak about uh, the second part of inelastic scattering, in particular about quasi-elastic neutron scattering and neutron spin echo. As short reminder, uh, we have seen many times, but uh, we are considering a sample, a beam, neutron beam, and uh, the energy and momentum transfer are h bar omega and q. Um, the type of uh, omega, the amount of omega exchange, is uh, define the type of scattering. So elastic scattering, inelastic scattering if uh, omega is different from zero, and a particular type of inelastic scattering is the quasi-elastic in which uh, omega is different from zero, is uh, small, but uh, uh, close to zero. We have seen many times that uh, the double differential cross se section is related uh, with the scattering function. And here there is a simple plot of a scattering function as a function of the excitation energy. And we see that uh, there is uh, the elastic peak broadened by the energy resolution of the instrument. Then uh, there are the inelastic component due to the um, resonances in the sample. And then uh, there is the broad peak due to the quasi-elastic uh, neutron scattering. Here there is the same plot, and we know that the quasi-elastic is associated with the relaxation phenomena, such as translational diffusion, molecular reorientations, and confined motion. Uh, we know that from the Heisenberg uncertainty rules uh, in energy and time, which is written here, the time scale of uh, the phenomena determine the energy resolution needed by the instrument to study this phenomena. So for fast phenomena, we have a broad peak because uh, um, the energy exchange is uh, large, while for slow phenomena, the energy exchange is small, so the, we have a narrow peak. Therefore, if we want to study slow phenomena, we need high energy resolution. An important parameter that uh, is important in quasi-elastic neutron scattering is the, this elastic incoherent structure factor, which is the ratio between the elastic component divided by the sum of the elastic and the quasi-elastic component. This factor means that uh, is the probability that a particle can be found in the same volume of space after the time t max and defined by the instrument resolution. Because if we consider this atom and we built a, a volume to pi over q, then we see that if this atom moves out in a time shorter than the time of the instrument resolution, we lose the elastic intensity to some quasi-elastic broadening. Uh, if we consider a small q, this value, this volume will be big. Therefore, it's uh, the factor will be equal to one, while for large Q, the volume is smaller, and uh, um, the the factor reaches uh, an asymptotic value that can be zero. That means uh, a diffusion free diffusion motion motion, or uh, an asymptotic value. That means that the, the motion is restricted. Here I remind the, the main equation, so the scattering function related with the double uh, Fourier transform to a correlation function. And then I remind that there is the intermediate scattering function, that is the Fourier transform in time of the scattering function and in space of this correlation function. Here I plot two different types of diffusion in which they are characterized by the Lorentzian distribution in the scattering function. While in the case of the intermediate scattering function, we have an exponential decay. And for long range diffusion, this goes to zero. While for restricted diffusion, we have a asymptotic value that lead to a, a, an elastic peak and delta function. Now entering in the instrument zoology, we know that uh, with the spectroscopy 
the instruments, we have we can study multiple physics cases, and uh, uh, there are many interests. We are focusing here on the spin echo, and we see that uh, in this plot we plot the energy as a function of the length, the so the energy or the time and the wavelength or or, or the length. And we see that uh, the energy in, that can be reached with the neutron spin echo instruments is uh, 10 to the minus 6 to milli electron volt, so uh, nano electron volt to milli electron volt, with a time scale of uh, uh, microsecond to tenth of uh, nanoseconds. That means that we can study with neutron spin echo the slow relaxation and diffusion phenomena. While for the length, we have micrometers to nanometers. So we can study polymers, glasses, and magnetic materials. Here, I want to stress also that uh, uh, why we can reach uh, with neutron spin echo such a, a good energy resolution with respect of backscattering or time of flight. Because uh, it's important to stress that uh, in neutron spin echo, the instrument, uh, the energy resolution is uh, um, not linked to the loss of beam intensity. While to reach high energy resolution, the other instruments, we need uh, to um, select neutrons uh, and therefore uh, reduce uh, the beam intensity. Here I remind uh, briefly the Larmor presection because the neutron spin echo is based a lot on that. So the neutron is a fermion, it has a magnetic moment, and when a magnetic field is applied, the neutron will start the Larmor presection around the field, so with an angular frequency omega L. And uh, um, this is described by the block, block equation. Spin flippers, pi and pi alpha, are an application of the perception, as we have seen in previous talks. The neutron spin echo technique was uh, invented by Ferry Mesey in uh, 1972, and uh, its first simple experiment was to follow the Larmor perception. So he took uh, a polarized neutron beam with the spin parallel to the guide field. Then uh, there is a spin flipper and then there is a region with a field that can uh, we can change the distance he saw that uh, the polarization oscillates from a minimum value to a maximum value and with large distances the polarization is a bit lost so we uh, find the seven we we'll all lose the seven percent of the polarization due to the scattering of the neutron beam the second step was to insert a field reversal in the middle, so dividing the precession region into symmetrical parts with equal but opposite magnetic field. In this way, the neutron, neutrons will do the same number of precession in this part and in the second part. So at the end, we recover the total polarization. Nowadays, uh, the generic neutron spin echo spectrometer is built uh, like this. So there is a velocity selector that which select the velocity in a wide energy uh, in wide, wide range. Then uh, there is a polarizer, a pi alpha mesa flipper. Then we start the presection in the solenoid. We have a pi flipper because uh, uh, instead of using a field reversal, we put a pi flipper because in this, that way we don't have the zero field points where the beam can depolarize. Then we have the sample, a second solenoid, a new perception solenoid, and a second pi alpha flipper, and then the analyzer and the detector. Uh, so the main idea of the neutron spin echo is that uh, the pi alpha is uh, a starting time of in terms of the neutron perception, the pi flipper is uh, a time reversal because it reverses the precession plane. And then we have a stop with uh, the second pi alpha. 
um, to understand better how the neutron spin echo works, uh, I put here two simple videos on given by uh, the neutron spin echo group at ILL. And uh, we have to take in mind that the different colors means uh, different velocities and the arrows means uh, the, the direction of the spin. So first of all, we have a velocity selector. Then uh, there is the polarizer and the split flipper. Then we start the presection. The presection plane changes because of this pi flipper. There is the sample, in this case is elastic scattering, so we have no energy exchange. Sorry. Then uh, there is a second solenoid, second pi half, and the, the analyzer, the detector. So we determine a intensity like this in the detector. In the case of inelastic scattering, the path will be the same, while now we have an energy exchange in the uh, sample. So we will see that uh, the color of the, the arrows change, so we have changed the velocity. So the, velo the velocity will change the number of presection in the uh, solenoid. So in the analyzer, we lose uh, some neutrons, and the signal in the detector is smaller with respect of the elastic scattering. Now, if we enter in the neutron spin echo equation, we know that uh, um, as we have seen for the Larman section, we reach uh, in the um, in the solenoids a total section angle given by the difference in the two branches given by the geromagnetic ratio, the field, the length of the solenoid, and the velocity of the neutrons. We have to take in mind that strictly these, the field and the length, uh, because of uh, the field is not really homogeneous, it's a field integral and not the simple product. Uh, if we consider an elastic scattering sample, the velocity in the two branches are equal, and the, if the line integral is the same in the two solenoids, then the angle, the total angle is zero. So we restore the original polarization. This is called the echo condition. Now, if we have a, an energy transfer, h bar omega, and if you are in the quasi-elastic regime, so a small energy transfer, we can expand the velocity in this way and um, making some math, we find the total presection angle with, in which there is this component that uh, takes in account the energy exchange. Expanding this in the first order in omega, we find the total angle in which we have an accumulated presection angle which is with respect of the econ condition. This prefactor has the dimension of time, so we can define this time that is called Fourier time. And uh, it's important to stress that the speed difference is encoded in the presection angle. This Fourier time is uh, uh, proportional to the field and to the velocities, in particular to the wavelength. And um, uh, so the resolution in time increases rapidly with the wavelength. As an example, I put uh, here eight times from beam with a field of 0 0.5 Tesla meter. So we find 50 nanosecond time and an energy exchange, exchange of 0 0.01 microelectron volt. Now, at the detector, we analyze a polarization with respect to a particular axis. But we have to take the average of all the protection angles. So the polarization is the average between uh, of the cosine of the protection angle. The average can be written as an integral in which uh, um, we use the scattering function because it is the probability of scattering a neutron with a given momentum and energy transfer, dividing, normalizing with the static structure factor.
Here in the numerator, we recognize the cosine Fourier transform of the scattering function, which is the real part of the intermediate scattering function. So the powerfulness of the neutron spin echo is to measure directly in the time domain. So we don't need a Fourier transform in, of the scattering data. Here I put a simple image of a simulation where we can see a diffusion mo motion with different time scales. Now, up to now, we have neglected the spin interaction with the sample that can be included with the, this prefactor PS, which um, depends on the type of scattering and the sample region. So for example, for nuclear spin incoherent scattering, this prefactor will, will be one third because of the selection of the direction. Then we have to consider that uh, uh, the field is not real homoge homogeneous. And in particular, the beam has a finite size. So neutrons will, will different position experience different fields leading to different trajectories, leading to different perception angles. Because we have also to consider that in each branch, we have 100,000 turns in each direction. So the high number of uh, turns ask high, high precision in the field. So we need 10 to the minus 6 precision in the field. To reach that, we insert Fresnel coil so that we can correct the trajectories and uh, Newton will experience the same uh, field. Then, as we said, we measure directly in the time domain. So uh, the resolution is not linked to a deconvolution, but it's only divided out. This means that the resolution can be measured with an elastic uh, sample calibrated. And uh, then we measure the inelastic uh, with an elastic sample. And then uh, the real uh, intermediate scattering function will be the measured uh, intermediate scattering function divided by the resolution. What is measured at the uh, spin echo? So the spin neutron spin echo spectrum is not measured continually, but uh, with the first point method. So the Fourier time is set uh, fixing the current in both of the solenoids. And uh, we scan the, the phase interval of pi alpha, selecting these four points. These four points are described by these equations and uh, uh, we have the baseline and the uh, echo amplitude. The baseline can be defined also using the up and down signal. These signals are find, found uh, switching off the pi alpha flipper, and in the case of up signal with the pi flipper also switched off so that we can determine the 100% polarization available. While for the down signal, we turn on the pi flipper. So in principle, we should find nothing. But uh, then there is the scattering in the instrument, so the, the value is not zero. So at the end, the polarization is two times over the amplitude divided by um, up minus down signal. Here I want to stress that the envelope of the spin echo group is uh, reflect the Fourier transform of uh, the uh, wavelength of the, the distribution of the wavelength of the neutrons exiting the uh, velocity selector. At ILL, uh, the first neutron spin echo instrument was IN11, which was dismissed after 40 years last year, and uh, it its main uh, um, its main uh, um, configuration were the IN11A with high energy resolution, 
and IN11C with high signal but moderate resolution because uh, there is a larger area detector. The polarization is uh, 99% and uh, the velocity selection is 15-22%, uh, so quite wide. Nowadays, there is IN15 that is high energy and high momentum resolution spectrometer optimized for quasi elastic small angle scattering. And uh, we can access easily to a wide range of relaxation time and distances. With this instrument, one famous uh, example is a reputation. So, the study of the melting of dense polymeric systems. Uh, for time scale shorter than, than 50 nanoseconds, there were many models that uh, agree with one another and with the experimental data, as we see in this region of the figure. So that, but these models were quite different in the long uh, um, energy, in a long time scale. So uh, IN15 helped to extend the time scale up to 200 nanoseconds, allowing discrimination between the models. So the Degen reputation model is confirmed. The reputation means a polymer chain, like uh, we see here, that is constrained laterally by the, the neighbors. Nowadays, there is also VASP, that is a wide angle spin echo instrument, that is a, a new generation neutron spin echo because we, in the plot, in the figure, we see clearly that there is not the typical shape of the solenoids, so two branches in between, in between the sample, but it um, built with two coils which are uh, one up and one down, and they can use a large area detector. With this uh, instrument, we can reach uh, so the same energy resolution of IN11A, but with a rate 1,000 times higher. Uh, in other facilities, there is also the neutron resonance spin echo, because uh, it, uh, it's helpful because uh, uh, normal around normal neutron spin echo instruments, uh, magnetic materials are a, a problem. So neutron resonance spin echo uses radio frequency fields, so the fields rotate and not the neutron spins. The advantage is the possibility to study the polarizing substances like uh, ferromagnet, superconductors, and uh, strong incoherent scattering samples. Now, up to now, I have described the classical description uh, of the neutron spin echo, but in the end here I put a quantum description because, uh, for example, for neutron resonance spin echo is not possible to use the classical description. So I put this simple slide to uh, give some hints. So the inter incident neutron beam is represented as a wave packet polarized in any direction. Then the magnetic field splits this wave packet and the Larmor intersection can be seen as a superposition phenomenon of spin up and spin down components of the wave packet. And here we see the wave function in which there is the um, Gaussian wave packet centered at K0 with delta K. And then there is the spin up and spin down component that are shifted by this delta K which is smaller than the width and the uh, position of the Gaussian uh, wave packet. Then the two wave packets arrive at the sample with a time different t. And if the molecule move between the arrival of the first and second wave packet, then the coherence is lost. Uh, if you want more details, I can advise you this uh, book from Lisey. So at the end, the strong points of neutron spin echo are the highest energy resolution of all scattering techniques that helps to determine uh, and uh, also um, neutron spin echo uh, can help to have a large dynamic range. 
then uh, there is a direct measurement uh, in the time domain so we don't need the Fourier transform like in other spin uh, scattering instruments. Uh, spin echo spectroscopy can uh, lead to high sample signal so because we have weak monochromatization of the incoming neutrons and then uh, we can apply the neutron spin echo to hard and soft matter to study slow relaxation and diffusion phenomena. I put uh, the, some uh, references that uh, I used and thank you, special thanks to Gabrielli and Peter for the help.